Hey y'all, welcome to the Messy Studio. Come on in and see what's going on. Welcome back. I really wasn't going to video this, and I'm not going to video the whole thing really. I'm just going to maybe kind of a photo collage, time lapse kind of thing. But I posted a couple of pictures when I got started uh, on my Facebook page, and a couple of my friends said, I need more details. Details about what? My conversion of my Harbor Freight two horse uh, dust collector into basically a cyclone type system using an Oneida Super Dust Deputy. I've had them both working in the shop for about three years now. And while it's worked very well, I haven't plumbed it since I moved into the new shop. And I, I think I can improve the efficiency by getting rid of the restriction of the filter bag and going straight cyclone. So you've got to have exhaust for something or somewhere. So where's that going? Well, the only thing that I've, I've found using my that Oneida Super Dust Deputy, that only the very finest and only a little bit of that dust actually gets collected in the bag. Well, over a year and a half, I collected that much. That's not much, and that's using my drum sander a lot. It was connected to my table saw. It was connected to, well, every tool I have, both lathes, so, or two of my three lathes. I'm gonna plumb it permanent, and I'm gonna get rid of the filter bags and just dump the very finest stuff right out the back of the shop. I can clean anything up out there that I need to as I, as I need to. So come along with me if you're interested and uh, we'll see what we get done. I started by taking the unit apart. You can see the stand that it was mounted to. I took the impeller unit off, I disconnected the bags and uh, the, the bag mounting mechanism and I fabricated this piece of uh, melamine so I cut a hole in my jigsaw the same size as the exhaust I didn't have any fender washers but I did have some thin sheet metal and I just basically made my own what the whole idea behind that is to increase the surface area around the bolt it's a carriage bolt so that it doesn't bust the melamine out and then that will mount to the wall actually it's not going to mount to a wall. Let me show you. So back here in the storage room on the side of the shop, I have this door. But, but the guy that put this together, this was the, this used to be the garage of one of the two houses that got moved in here. Those two houses were put together into one. Anyway, this was, the shop was the garage and this was basically the entryway or the laundry room from the garage into the house and you had this door well he didn't take the door out he just left the door in and then walled over it i added these pieces of fur it's two by six that i cut down to dimension and I notched out for the handle and the reason i'm leaving it this way instead of Originally, I thought I was going to put a piece of three-quarter inch plywood in here, take the door out. But um, in case I need to get in here and work on it or use her, once I get my hole cut in and my vent put in place, uh, I bought a stainless steel vent to go up here. So once I get all of that done, if I ever need to get in here and clean it out or do any work on it or anything, uh, I'll just open the door and I can, I'll have ready access. So these are just left in here in rough space. These aren't for fastened right yet because I don't have the dimensions right. What I'm going to do is take this door off, take it in and put it on the workbench. And uh, the unit that, that you saw, that piece of melamine will bolt right here. And then I'll mark my hole that I need to cut and I'll make sure that everything matches up and I'll have just a small channel in here. I'll fill this out so that it's just enough to dump through the vent. And then I'll have that sealed all with uh, weather stripping as necessary. So that's where I am so far. This I'll bolt to the door. This piece of three quarter inch plywood I cut, it's gonna mount here. 
I'll bolt this up and from here I'll put a 2 by I'm going to screw a 2 by on here to give it a little more strength and then have running from here down to this part of the door I'll have a brace coming up here on each side and it'll be screwed to the door so that should be plenty strong with that cantilever with two cantilever two by fours I may use two by six yeah I probably will I'll probably use two by six because that will give me a bigger footprint down here okay here you can see I used five three inch deck screws and I screwed this piece of two by to this plywood and then I used six bolts <clears throat> double washered everything and so this is nice and sturdy now I've got to mark the holes for this and get this mounted or not get it mounted but get it ready to mount to the door once I get these holes in I'll temporarily put some screws or bolts in place and then I'll work on my cross braces okay I've got this all mounted to the door got a nice frame with angle support down it was it was held to the door fine before I put the braces in and it would have stayed there just like it was as long as the motor wasn't running but I was afraid that the vibration from the motor would would weaken that melamine it's just uh, particle board basically covered with laminate on both sides and I was afraid that it would weaken over time but even if it does now it's not going anywhere this is I mean I can't budget it's rock solid now when I open the door you see I've got the walls in I'm gonna put some I've got some leftover styrofoam insulation I'm gonna shove in here just to help I framed this just so that it would be around the opening of this stainless steel it's a six inch stainless steel flapper style exhaust uh, port that you mount on the outside of the house for your dryer vents or uh, bathroom vents etc and you can see here I took the this piece that was originally bolted to this piece to run into the bags <clears throat> I put a piece of I cut a piece of mouse pad as a a casket and then cut it out on the inside to, to match the, the, the hole so there's a mouse pad in, in here, under here as a gasket and that's not going to leak I've hot glued around everything so it's not going to leak. I took three layers of strips of mouse pad and hot glued them on here and built me a gasket to go from this outlet and it butts perfectly up against this six inch outlet. I have no exhaust leaks at all so everything coming from the collector goes straight into here. The bottom inside here is flush so it can't collect anything either closes nicely <clears throat> I'm gonna run some foam weather stripping all the way around the door all three sides and even down on the floor to help ensure that if I do get a leak inside here the dust pretty much isn't gonna come blowing back out into the shop yeah it's overkill because of how well that's engineered but it is what it is you know you know if you've watched many of my builds you know that I have a tendency to over engineer things but they stay together and they last and that's the way I like it. the cyclone will sit right in here I'm gonna build a platform down here that raises and lowers that will bring the bucket up to the bottom of the cyclone and I can just strap the band around it and go ahead and press on when I need to get to it, I'm going to lower the platform, pull the bucket out, take the bag out of it, put a new bag in, I'm good to go. So how am I going to do that? 
this is the platform that the collector originally sat on. <clears throat> I'm going to take all of this stuff off. I'm going to take the casters off. I'm going to build a 2x4 frame with a cross member going through the middle under here inside it to stiffen this up and I'm going to use this winch mounted right here the bucket the collector bucket for the cyclone will sit right here run the strap up across two rollers above it and then back down to here <clears throat> and I'm going to use that winch to raise and lower the, the platform to keep it running true and steady I'm going to build a track on either side of this mounted to the door and I'm going to use these old training wheels from my son, grandson's bicycle and mount them here and they will run in that track and keep that running true. And yeah, I've got some things to figure out, but it's fun and it's, I'm getting there and I'm making progress. Okay, I've got the frame built inside the bottom of the, that thin sheet metal deck that the dust collector was mounted on. I put it together using pocket screws. Now, that winch will actually bolt up right in these holes. It'll fit sideways in doing it, but what that does is it lets me put the crank here on the end. It'll just have a little bit of a 90 degree sweep as it goes up. Now it's time to start working on the track. I'm making PVC rollers for the pipe, I mean for the strap. This, I'm turning this so that it fits on the inside. It'll only be about a half inch long and I'm going to turn these down for a shoulder and then this will go in between them and I'll have rollers for my straps. The roller mechanism is in. You can see the rollers up there. The strap drops back down behind the door, hooks to those two cables. Just like a three-legged stool, there's three legs on it for stability. So. It's not as smooth as and level running as I was hoping it would be. I have to tweak on this a little bit. But it drops just fine. And now I can get the bucket out. And then when I need to raise it back up. Back up into position and seal the bucket just like that. All in all, I'm happy as a pig in slop. Concept works, could be better, could be smoother, but all, I'm happy with it. So now I need to finish plumbing the plumb in the dust collection. I've got it run through the wall. That's done on this side and it's done to here on this side. My other two, these are two more long pieces, 10 foot sections. That drop is going to go down to my table saw and I'll also have a hose here because I'm going to put that sander on a cart that I've already got and I'm going to move that sander over here so both of these will be over here on carts and I just have to hook a hose up to them when I want to use them and then I'll finish plumbing the drop to the floor sweep which is going to be right there where the shovel is coming off of that for the big lathe there will be a Y shooting over here to the small lathe Got a little bit of work left to do, but I'm getting there. Okay, this is where the hose comes in from the other room where the cyclone is, or the pipe. And it comes across here to my first drop, and that goes down 
to both my table saw which is connected now and that blast gate that will be connected to a four inch flex hose that I will hook to either my oscillating spindle sander or my drum sander. They're going to sit right over here permanently when I get this stuff out, when I get all this finished and get all this stuff out of the way. So they'll sit there and then I can just move them because they're both on wheeled carts or will be. That one right now isn't, but it will be. And I'll just move them where I want them, do my sanding, move them back out of the way. And that'll open up that space over there along the that workbench, which is supposed to be a workbench, where the other sander cart gets stored. And we come along the ceiling more over to the corner. There's a Y right here that I haven't plumbed yet. It will run, well I'll show you that in a minute. This drop right here comes down to two blast gates. The first one, the top blast gate, will be uh, a flex hose running to my uh, inlet that I built for my big lathe and, and it'll run there so I'll have a blast gate for it. The other blast gate will drop or will connect to a floor sweep that'll be right down here. So the floor sweep will be right here. There's the drop for that. We will come off of this Y across the ceiling over here with one Y for a drop for that dust collector box on my Comet 2 and it'll elbow off and run to and this cart's going to be moved back to the back of the shop get it out of the way and the other drop will be up here it will have a blast gate on it and it'll hook to my bandsaw so I'm getting close to being done I've got this last leg to run and uh, I'll be back okay finally got the last leg run and it's all strapped up the hardest part's done and that's the high stuff up in the heat I can stay down in the fans for the rest of it so I've got to run to Lowe's and get a few more parts I'll be back I got the last two drops done to the blast gates I'm gonna let my sealant on the tubes dry a little bit but that's gonna work got dust collection already hooked up to my small lathe working on the dust collection for my big lathe that'll be something like this I'll have a hose running from here over to this with plenty of space I'm going to rig up a, a basically an outrigger on this thing here that I can move if I need to I got to figure out how I want to really hook that up. I had this contraption mounted to the wall and I could slide it back and forth back in the old shop. That's not going to work here so I have to come up with something else. I may use this old fan uh, stand to hook something to. I, I don't know yet. I've, I got other stuff that I need to get done first. I've got to finish the the floor sweep I'll use that green pipe and and this thing here I'll build a floor sweep around this and it'll it'll sit over here I'll notch the corner out a little bit to get it in but it's going to sit right in here but I don't need to video all of that it's all done it works good Let me go turn the dust collector on and see if you can hear it. You may be able to hear a little bit of whistling. That's coming from one of these blast gates. I may change it out for a better one. 
I bought some better ones. These are good. These have a tendency to leak. This one leaks just a little, but I'm, that's my suction. I think that's plenty of air movement. Yeah, this has a little bit of a leak too, but I just opened this blast gate. And this has almost as much suction as that over there. See? This is the belt, the drive belt for this lathe. I've got to replace it. But that holds pretty good. That's plenty of suction. So I don't think I need to upgrade to 5 inch coming out of the dust collection room across the ceiling and go to 4 inch drops at all. I think I've got everything I need suction wise. More than enough. This will go to this way here. So I think we're good. So thanks for watching, thanks for sticking with me throughout this whole ordeal. It took uh, about a week and a half, and like I said, I'm not quite finished yet, but for the most part, we're in good shape. Uh, I've got the floor sweep left to finish. Y'all don't need to see that. I'll post some pictures of it on my Facebook later when that happens. Uh, I need to finish working this dust collection for the lay that other than that everything else is good I need to put tools away and reorganize a little bit and then I'll start carving that octopus Doug uh oh what's that oh this yeah don't worry about that I'm fine uh really I'm fine I'm gonna have a black eye uh stupid 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 I tripped believe it or not uh, walking out the door of the shop tripped over a leg of a ladder and uh, thankfully I had a stack of Hackberry logs about I don't know about 10 inches long anyway there was a stack of logs about 10 inches long out there that broke my fall but I'm fine really uh, so I'm gonna call it a day uh, going and rest up a little bit, clean up and rest up a little bit and and see how sore I'm going to be. So I appreciate you watching. I really do. Oh, uh, if you want to support the, the Messy Studio in any way, uh, that's fine. If you would like to support the Messy Studio, I have t-shirts and mugs and links to those are in the script, uh, description below. Anyway, links to my t-shirts and mugs are in the description below. Uh, any purchase you make, I really appreciate. But uh, y'all stick with me and come back and see what we get into next. Hopefully I'll be able to see. <laughs> it's, it's swelling up a little. Y'all come back.